All right, so my last video, I talked a lot about some of the things that were getting in the way of my, my achieving goals and some of the time management issues I've had, struggles to find time, struggles to make time, all of that. So I thought what I would do today is I just walked out of my office building. It's Monday at lunchtime, and I'm gonna show you how I maximize my lunch break. So that's something all of us hopefully get. If you have a job, we get a lunch break. Well, what do I do with my lunch break now that I've had to reimagine and make time, reimagine my schedule and make the time to get things done for my goals. So I'm gonna take you guys along on my lunch break. You're gonna see how much I can fit in in a one hour break. So first stop is to go get something to eat. So one of my favorite lunch spots is in this mall across from where I work. The last time I was down there to eat, the restaurant was actually closed for remodeling. So I'm not sure, wait, where am I going? This way. I'm not sure if it's reopened. So hopefully it is because I love this place. So yeah, let's see. I left a little earlier than usual for lunch because if you don't leave early, everybody seems to go exactly at noon. So I stepped out just a few moments before noon to try to get a seat. Let's go see. The remodel of the new restaurant is done. If not, I'll have to find another place. back open my favorite noodle place so let's eat so I have to order on the app which is annoying because it doesn't always work and the QR code and it sits here blank waiting waiting so this is why you need to have a productivity plan because stuff like this gets in the way Trying again. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I get the same thing every time, which is not very creative, but I really love this one. Spicy. Oh, where is it? Don't tell me. Don't tell me they got rid of it. What? What the hell? They got rid of it. Alright, so one trick that I do when I'm at my lunch, if you can hear me, sorry, it's really loud here, but is I always bring a book. So I've always got a book with me no matter what, either an e-book, like my iPad or my phone, or a physical book. And as I wait for my food, I read. So this is another way to get a good 20, 30 minutes of reading in, is during your lunch time. And I'm going to talk more about this specific book um, and its predecessor towards the end of the video. Um, but it, this book plays into my organizational steps that I'm taking to be more productive. So hopefully you can hear me. I've got three people literally yelling right next to me. So uh, yeah, let's get reading. Waiting for the food.
out with my favorite noodle anymore. It's not on the menu, I don't know why. Super annoying. I've been getting it at this location for four years. So, I'm not sure what happened. I'll have to bring one of my friends from work who speaks Chinese and then have him ask next time. Because I love that one. This one, it's just like a basic kind of like tomato-y broth with these rice noodles. I mean, it's still really good, but not even close to the last one. Which I don't, it was weird because I was the, always the one, like I'd never seen anybody else getting the one that I got. Um, the original one that I really love. But they would always get this one. And this one's not great compared to the other one. So, I don't know. Maybe not enough people ordered it. Maybe it was just me once every couple weeks. So, I read. So instead of talking to the camera, I would typically be reading. I did get some reading in while they were making this. I get at least 20 to 30 minutes of reading in every lunch break, no matter what. People ask me all the time, how do you read so much? I get a lot of it done, lunch break, and laying in bed at night. So, I think a lot of us don't maximize the time we actually have. But reading, which is one of the things that I'm gonna get accomplished on this lunch break. By the end, we'll have four main things that I'll get done, besides eating, which is important. I'm gonna touch on all of those four. But right now, I gotta eat, so I'm gonna turn you guys off. All right, lunch done. Kind of disappointed that they don't make the soup that I usually get. It is what it is, right? All good things come to an end. Or maybe it's just a seasonal thing, but again, I've been going there for four years. I've never had an issue with it not being on the menu. Anyhow, all right, so lunch is done. Got a little bit of reading done. Got about 20 minutes of reading done. And now we go to the second activity that I do on my lunch, and that is we are going to take a walk. So gonna burn off some of the food I just ate, get a little bit of exercise. So typically in the mornings, I uh, will walk the dogs and I'll take them for a 30, 40 minute walk in the morning. It's usually two miles, give or take. And then I will typically take a walk at lunch. So that's activity number two. So we already got reading done, we got eating done, which I don't really count that as a activity because it is the whole reason I'm not working is to go eat. So that's a given. So reading number one now, we're gonna go for a walk. Let's go. All right, so this is Nanjing East Road, one of the busiest shopping streets in the world at peak traffic. They say a million people a day walk down this uh, walking street, the shopping street. And I have definitely seen it at that peak. Uh, it's, not, it's not that today, it's a Monday. Monday afternoon, not a holiday. Other than summer break for the kids. There's a lot of kids out, I see kids everywhere. But it's not the typical craziness that uh, you see like on a holiday, a national holiday. This road is just absolutely packed. So, and in fact, what they do is they split this road into two lanes and basically one is going the direction I'm going and you have to go all the way to the end and then circle back. You can't just cut across, you know, to go in this store over here, let's say. You can't, you can't do that during national holidays. It's too crazy, there's too many people. So, uh, yeah, 200 million people a year walk down this shopping street. If you come to Shanghai, chances are you're gonna come to Nanjing East Road. So I've been trying to get more exercise lately. And that's always, if you guys have been following me, seen some of my previous videos, you know that that's a super sore subject. It's such an off and on relationship with fitness. But what I've found is even things like these little walks during your lunch break can make you feel a lot better and can obviously increase your step count for the day. I try to hit minimum 10,000. 
Every day, typically, I kind of range between 12 and 14, depending on what's going on. But 10 is the minimum, so what I find is this walk towards the middle part of my lunch helps with achieving that goal. Makes me have a little bit more energy for the back half of my work day, which I typically will take a little bit of an energy dip. And this walk that I'm on now helps me prevent that. So that way I can stay productive at work. Because my life is just not my creative pursuits. I wish it were, maybe. Maybe someday, probably not. But for now, I have to balance work life as well. So, yeah. But I'm walking towards a stunning part of Nanjing East Road. So here, check this out. All right, so I'm down on the Bund, and Shanghai, as you can see, has one of the most spectacular skylines in the world that I've seen personally. And I've lived in Shanghai seven years. I visited here in 2011, and then 2015, 2016, a few times, and then moved here permanently in 2017. And I'm still stunned by the Bund and the skyline and the buildings and, I don't know, just the whole vibe down here by the water. It's not the cleanest water, it's not the cleanest river I've ever seen, of course. Most big rivers and big cities are not clean anymore, unfortunately. But it's still a super cool place to come and have a nice walk on your lunch break. But the heat is no joke. I will be a sweaty mess by the time I get back to work, but that's okay. I've got some office time, pretty much by myself working on my computer, so I don't have meetings till later, so I won't be sweating on people or around them or, you know, just looking a mess. Yeah, so one of the things that I'm constantly thinking about is how to get more productive, and there's a lot of people that use that word online, productivity, productivity hacks, and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, all that's cool. I've watched a million of those videos, read you know, most of the books by all the gurus, if not all the books. Some of them are very helpful, but I have found a couple systems, sorry, I got sweat like literally running into my mouth. I found a couple systems that work for me. My graduating class here behind me. Taking the class pictures. So yeah, uh, I found a couple systems that work for me personally. And one of them I'm going to talk about here, and it's the PARA method. And this comes from, uh, this is the second book in this series. And the first book is called Building a Second Brain. And the guy who came up with this, his name is Tiago Forte. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Apologies if uh, I just messed that up. But it's a super easy, intuitive way to organize your digital life, basically. And I mean, I guess this could apply to an offline life too, if you're still someone who keeps paper files and some things we have to do that. So sweaty. Yeah, anyway, so the PARA method, Tiago Forte, it's basically super simple. So you create a system of four files, and it's P-A-R-A, -A. and P stands for projects, A stands for areas, R stands for resources, and the second A stands for archive. And you just, those are your four buckets for your life. So for any information, that's notes, that's emails, that's project files, that's a quote you read in a book that you want to save that you've highlighted or you take, take a screenshot. Um, basically anything that comes into your digital life that you need to use uh, goes into these four buckets. So 
the first bucket is projects, and that is any active thing that's going on in your life, right? It can be work, it could be home remodel, it could be, you know, wedding coming up, it could be anything, but it's a, it's a project that has a definite start and end date. And it's also something that you need to refer to quite often, daily, hourly, weekly, what, what, what have you. Areas are other things that you need to manage, but are more long-term projects. So you might have an area that is like, you know, fitness. You might have one that is, um, you know, writing my book, okay? So, well, that could be a project too, but maybe let's say you're writing a book series. Maybe you're gonna write three books, a trilogy or something like that, right? So the project would be book one and books two and three might go in areas. Um, you know, something would be like, for me, would be the different areas of, of work, right? So my work is broken up into very specific areas of the business and they all need different skills and competencies for me to manage. So I break them out into different areas because it's long-term long-term things I need to refer to. Resources, that's obvious. It's some things that you probably don't need a lot, but you don't want to lose track of. So maybe it's a handbook, maybe it's an instruction manual for you know some tech gadget that you have. Uh, maybe it's a map, maybe it is a, um, you know, some sort of like a, what do you call it? Like a, like a contact list, you know, for maybe all the parents in your kid's school or whatever, right? Like that, that could be a place that you would just drop that, that list and resources. You don't need it a lot but when you do, it's there. And then archive is obvious. It's, it's, it's just the stuff you don't really need that much anymore. You're not gonna use. So um, the PARA method, I have it on in my notes app. I have it in my things. I use things for my to-do list. And it is in my, I structure my email inbox based on PARA. So I've got projects, areas, resources, and archives. And then sub folders within those areas that break it down even more specifically. So anyhow. My last video I talked about how I've been struggling to get things done and I needed to take a new look at my life and um, I had read the first book in this series, Building a Second Brain, last year, maybe it was two years ago. And I adopted some of it but I just, I just kind of set it aside. I was reading other things at the time. I didn't really know which one would work for me. Um, so I've revisited it and this one here, the PARA method, is, is just the stripped down book. So if you just want kind of the Cliff's Notes or uh, some, something to get you started, go straight to this book here. It won't give you a lot of the philosophy behind why this approach works, but it just gives you the nuts and bolts to get you started and get you more productive and getting more stuff done. So, yeah, so speaking of which, getting more stuff done. Let's finish my walk, and I gotta get to the third thing on my list that I'm gonna do on my productive lunch break. Say bye to the bun. It is hot. Not gonna lie. Oh, security guard in the park. Keeping me safe on this beautiful little magical path through flowers. An assorted shrubbery. One thing about China, it is super safe. I'd say probably the most dangerous thing in China is the air quality, depending on the city. And the the driving in general. And that's not even that bad. It's not certainly not the worst country I've been to as far as like driving safety. But it's actually not the cars, it's the scooters. It's the delivery guys on the scooters. I mean they just jump up on sidewalks and yeah, it can get a little dangerous to be honest, in my opinion. I can't tell you how many times I've almost been run down by one of those delivery guys on his little his little scooter. Other than that, China's safe. There's a security guard every 10 feet. I don't know if that's a good thing. Kind of feels like a police state. It is a police state, but there's no crime. There's like zero crime. Zero.
content creators now. It's pretty cool, actually. Think about we can all capture our life in ways that appeal to, to us as individuals. I know it gets a bad rap, especially probably for someone my age. You know, me, a 51-year-old with a YouTube channel. Probably not a whole lot of people that do that, but I don't know. I like it. I enjoy it. I think it's interesting. But everybody's out taking pictures, taking video, especially in this area. All right, so we're going to sit down. And we're going to get to the third thing on my list. Third thing I just got done is I got about 20 minutes of writing finished, so it wasn't much. It's basically two pages in my journal, uh, my story journal. So I'm working on one of the books that is part of my big goal. And yeah, I just got some ideas down, got some more scenes that I'm thinking about and working on, and but I got something done. the most of these little moments that we get throughout the day so as I was saying earlier most of us who work full-time get a lunch break maybe for some of you that's only 30 minutes maybe some people it's 45 minutes for me I get a full hour but what I try to do is I try to do something during that hour not just eat and sit and like zone out I don't play video games you know like some of my colleagues do I don't sit around and gossip I, whoa, almost got hit by a scooter. Uh, I do something, I read, I walk, I write. So three things, what are we at here? We're at 1.2 miles right now that I've walked on my lunch break. 1.2 miles, I still have a little bit to go, so let's call it, that would be, yeah, maybe a mile and a half by the time I get back to the office and the number four thing, I told you there's four things. So in this video, we talked about how to maximize time by reading and getting out for some exercise, taking a walk, got some writing done. Uh, I recommended a book to you guys, actually two books if you read his first one, Building a Second Brain, and this is called The Para Method. And the fourth thing, what else did I accomplish on my mini productivity lunch Hackathon, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. What else did I do? I filmed this YouTube video. Four things in an hour lunch break. This is just one example of how I'm challenging myself to do and be better, be different, do things differently, to just try to get more stuff done. So yeah, that's it for today. Quick walk through Shanghai, talking about productivity and giving you a little taste of what you can actually accomplish with an hour lunch break. See you guys next week.